Okay, well, um, so here we are again, another Friday. Um, welcome to um, Exploring Python, coming to you from actually sunny Chicago. It's a nice day today. Um, our, our lockdown continues here in the state of Illinois. I think we're in it for all of May, so things are loosening up a little bit, but not much around here. Um, so, um, I guess to get started, um, I'll say this over and over again, because I know that people are just joining, but uh, if, um, if you know, anybody wants to jump in and chat and comment and things like that, that will help drive us forward. Um, even if it's kind of a little bit of a detour, that's part of the fun. And yes, I was actually gonna say, I, I'm trying to improve my streaming game. So I've gotten various overlays going and um, it's, it's getting better. Yes, I, I think so. So um, I'm glad that people are joining me. I'm, I've been looking forward to this series as well. Um, so I've got, I've got a number more of these to do and then we'll see where we're at, but I, I have several more that I can do. So um, I'm kind of looking forward to this too. So yeah, let me switch over to then um, our code window uh, and uh, we can talk a little bit about um, sort of my, my, my standard intro stuff. So if you want to find me, you can find me at naomicedar.tech. Um, and um, this notebook, the sort of the, the starting version without all of the messing around in it uh, is on GitHub, uh, ncedar exploring underscore Python. So you can find it there. Um, Quick Python book. I have been saying that the free ebook, or that the ebook was free through the end of May. That was my fault. I got that scrambled. Uh, it was free through the end of April. So I haven't checked, but I don't think it's free any longer. However, if you really want an ebook uh, version of uh, the Quick Python book and you don't have one already, uh, contact me. I have a few uh, free codes that I can give away uh, as promos. So um, the, the official free thing is done, but I have, I have some that I can give out. Um, what else? Um, I guess I, I have to put in a plug for um, Python Online. Uh, there's getting to be quite a bit of content up. So if you go to uh, uspycon.org uh, slash 2020 slash online, you can find everything. Um, they've got a ton of talks up, some of the tutorials. Uh, there We now have three of the charlas up uh, in Spanish. We've got five more coming. Uh, and of course, you can find their, their YouTube channel from there, or it's at that link. And there's all sorts of... of interesting hatchery stuff that is about to happen. So to put in a plug for the hatchery stuff, I think the next thing up uh, will be the one that, that Chuck is working on, which is the um, sprint for diverse um, uh, beginners, the data sprint. So um, you can certainly check that out and see if you're interested in, in contributing that way uh, or not. So um, I do have a note here. Um, a little bit about using shells. I talked about this last time, so I'm not going to go through it again. If you want to, um, if you want to do uh, anything using a shell, there are a bunch of shells you can use, and I certainly would love to have people play along uh, so that you can maybe try something different uh, or or find find a question to ask, whatever. So uh, please go ahead, but. Uh, my warning from last time still still holds. Shells are great for exploring. They're not so great for actually writing regular code. Uh, but this time, this is the second part of objects and I wanted to pick up a little bit from where we left off last time uh, and then talk a little bit about uh, class data and instance data and class methods and instance methods and a little bit with properties. There are all sorts of things floating around uh, that involve um, 
the, the mechanics of, of classes and object orientation in Python. Uh, but sometimes people are, I think, uh, a little bit hazy about exactly how all of this stuff works. I mean, you know, true confession, I think when I first started out for years, I was a little bit hazy about class method, what? Now, you know, and then we got static methods, what? Uh, and um, if you don't have a clear understanding of that, what I've found is usually what you do is you experiment until you finally get something that kind of works. But then when you want to go and do something in a similar but different situation, well, basically you have to start all over again experimenting to something that uh, that kind of works. So yeah, it's all of us. Uh, we, we've all been there. So I wanted to talk through some of this stuff. Like I say, kind of picking up from where we ended up last time, which was kind of the basics of, of classes and how they work. So, you know, you may recall we, we figured out that um, instances, that is things we make out of classes are definitely objects, that's not a surprise, and they contain their data uh, attached to self. So all instance methods get self, and then we use that to attach data to the actual instance. Self is the instance. So um, here we've got the same doc class we had last time, except now, a little bit of foreshadowing, I've named it Old Duck because, well, we're going to start getting a new duck soon. Um, and again, um, you can, uh, we have a, an initializer, a dunder in it, uh, and if we give it a name or if we give it a sound, it will go ahead and put those into the particular instance we're creating, uh, attaching it to self. So uh, whatever we pass in as name becomes self.name, whatever we pass in as sound becomes self.sound. Uh, and then we can have an instance method, and the instance method here to say hello can access the instance data again using self. We have to give it self, self.sound, self.name. Uh, and when we do that, Donald works just as we did, uh, just as he did the last time. So it's cool. Um, one thing that I'm going to be playing with now, uh, last time when we were poking around with classes, we used uh, the, the DIR function. And it's handy, but particularly when you're looking at, at objects, uh, it shows you everything that the object possesses, but it does also show things that the object only possesses because of inheritance. <coughs> Excuse me, it's allergy season here. Um, so uh, that means that you can get kind of a cluttered display um, so, um, here, actually, let me show you how this works again, just to refresh your memory. So, uh, oops, I need to actually initiate, I actually run that. There we go. Okay. Um, oh, I was doing it silly. Never mind. Never mind. See, this is where it would be handy if it weren't for the several seconds delay I've got while streaming. People could stop me from doing silly things like that. Uh, so, you know, we got everything. And notice we've got this whole bunch of, of dunder methods here. And pretty much all of those except for init uh, down here and hello, uh, all of the rest of those are actually uh, inherited. They're not part of old duck. We didn't put them all in there. They just get come to us because of the fact that um, old duck implicitly uh, inherits from object and object has all of that. So that's why for this session, uh, since we're going to be looking at classes to cut down on the uh, clutter, I'm going to be using this dunder dict attribute. And a dunder dict attribute is the dictionary that holds the namespace for the object. Oh, <coughs> it is allergy time. Uh, I have a funny feeling I'm going to have to pause here in a little while. 
to uh, see that. Okay, so question, how can I see the implementation of the original object um, without actually looking at, knowing what that object is and looking at that object? Uh, you can't. So um, it, it's not something that's going to be uh, available. Now you can actually, from digging into the class, find out what the original object is and go look at it. So, you know, we, we do have some ability for introspection, but it's um, not that. The object, well, okay, so you can go look at object. I'm sorry, yeah. So, I mean, we can do this. And you'll see it's got all of the dunder methods and nothing else. Now, if you want to look at the implementation as the code, then you're going to need to dig around in the Python source code. And um, Python source code is, is a, a, a big code base, of course, and it's got, um, got lots and lots of files, and the implementation is partly in uh, C for C Python uh, and partly in Python. So I haven't actually looked to see if you can find anything in Python that describes the, the implementation of object or not. I mean, in effect, it would be, I think, um, some things would be, would be implemented probably in C, and some things probably would be just stubbed out classes. So like dunder init, um, if it exists in Python, it's just gonna be dunder init pass. Uh, uh, and if it's in C, it's gonna be pretty much the same thing. So yeah, you can check that out. Okay, um, that, by the way, is exactly the sort of thing I was hoping for is people asking questions that come up like that. So, um, now I want to, though, show you Dunder Dict, which would make life uh, a bit easier. As I say, we've got our, our old duck class, and we just want to see the stuff that is actually in uh, old duck. We can do this. Um, and um, this gives us a thing called a mapping proxy, uh, which is a subclass of a dict. Uh, it's subclass of dictionary. Uh, the thing is, it does not uh, allow you to actually uh, change or add things. So, um, you know, we, we saw when we were messing around, you can change the attributes of a class, but you can't directly change uh, the namespace dictionary once it's created. You can with, uh, with an object, with an instance. So if I do this on the actual instance, you'll see it's simpler. It doesn't have all of the class machinery. So init is a bound method. It belongs to the class, not the instance. And you see it describes, this is init signature. Uh, hello is a function. Again, we get its signature uh, and some other attributes that we've got. But um, when we go look at the instance, with dict, we just see its particular uh, attributes that have been set on it, presumably using um, dunder init. And again, that's a lot easier uh, than doing this, which is the dir, and we get all of the stuff that's coming from the class. Uh, you know, hello is the method in the class. So doing this does show us all of the things that the instance can do, but it doesn't show us specifically what is in the instance. So since I'm talking about instance versus class, uh, I want to use Dunder Dict. So it's just another tool that you can use when you're poking around in Python. So just a quick backup. Remember here we set sound as something that was going to belong to each instance. And then we use the default so that probably most of the time they would all get the same sound. That's, that's totally fine. You can do it that way. But particularly for our purposes, suppose 
that we're interested in just sticking some data in the class. Or suppose you see while you're reading some other code, uh, something like this. So here we've got our dunder init setting some instance data name attached to self. We've got our uh, method here, just the same thing we had before, but notice that sound is not actually attached to self. Okay, so I'm going to, to fire that off so that we now have a new duck. And let's have a look at what's in new duck. So we can see here it's much the same except now sound is up here in the duck object. And I need to change this around a little bit. I need to actually make my instance here. I'm just going to steal this from down here. Okay. So now if I make uh, a, a, an instance from this class, I now only have name here. Sound has been moved up to the class. So it's going to be uh, a class variable, in other words. And that means, just so we're all on the same page, that means that uh, the uh, every uh, item in the class, every item that is, is, is an instance of that class is going to have the same sound. Okay, which may or may not be what we want. I mean, I know I, I don't want to put too much more weight on the poor duck's shoulders, but uh, we can hope that. Uh, so the question is, since we now know that sound has been moved up to belong to the class. If we try to say hello here, you'll notice this still refers to self.sound. Does that work or not? And while you're thinking about that, and feel free to put a guess into the, into the chat, can we also access that sound with a dunder method? Um, you don't actually need a dunder method. We'll poke around at that in a second. And if, if what you see doesn't clear things up, you can, you can you know, follow up. So again, question, if I want to use this now that I've moved class, or I've moved sound up to the class, and I'm still saying self, does that work? In other words, this. I'm going to wait a second. Somebody can guess. Come on, help me out here. I mean, if we were live, this would be where I would invoke my 25 years of teaching and say I can outweigh you. But probably in this particular case, uh, I, I shouldn't do that. So, no, nobody's willing to guess. Okay, actually, the, we, we, we got to guess. And yes, because the instance also has the class attributes. Let's, let's see, we can confirm or deny right now. Okay, that worked. Um, and um, I'm not sure that the explanation is 100% uh, on, but the instinct is right. So let's, let's explore this a little bit more and see if maybe we can, can um, figure out a little bit more about what's going on. So um, what we have kind of going on here is, is a couple of different things. So for one thing, um, we saw this when we were doing things with uh, bound methods uh, last time, is that uh, an instance, if it's looking for an attribute, will tend to uh, 
sort of go up the chain. If the instance doesn't have the attribute, it will look at the class. If the class doesn't have the attribute, it'll look at a parent class all the way on up to object. So uh, in that sense, that, that is true then that the, the instance has the, the class's attributes that way. Uh, and that's what's going on. But what we get into here is a matter of scope. And uh, those of you who are, you know, have, have done a certain amount of coding and whatever may be familiar with scope, if you're kind of starting out in coding, this may be uh, something that you haven't really you know, gotten a, uh, your head completely wrapped around yet. So um, scope is kind of a word, uh, is the word for where variables are, excuse me, let me fix this, are visible. Uh, so, um, in general, what happens is that um, you could sort of say that, you know, an instance kind of inherits or, or is underneath uh, a class and, you know, a subclass and so on. In general, the information can kind of flow uh, down into a contained scope or into an inherited scope. Um, so what I mean is if I'm in a function, I can see everything that is at the module level. Uh, if I'm in an instance, I should be able to see what's at a class level, um, those sorts of things. But this is what we will be picking at today the information generally doesn't flow outward. So um, this is kind of the notion of, of encapsulation. Uh, that is, objects can't sort of do things in the outside world. To give, it helps reduce uh, the possibility for runaway, hard to find bugs. Uh, if you could have uh, an instance changing things all over your program, uh, that would be, well, frankly, a nightmare. Uh, so there's this idea that as you get more and more specific, you contain, encapsulate that information and it doesn't flow outward. Uh, and in fact, um, that, that's kind of what happens. So if we do this, um, we have sound is attached to the class, not to self. So the question becomes, if we do this, this kind of works, but it can't really be the, the best way of doing things. Um, so how is it we would change this to get uh, the sound from the class directly. In other words, if I say we shouldn't use self because it doesn't actually belong to self, we're actually kind of lying and that will make our code a little bit weird to read. What should we be doing there? Well, one option would be to do something like that, right? Um, because uh, we know that sound is here, we're here. So it would seem to make sense that, that we could see this up here. Okay. Um, And let, let me see here while you're thinking about that. Let me ask a question. So in answer to the question, uh, yes. Uh, that is, uh, if sound is now bound to the class and not the instance, will all instances see the same uh, object for sound? And the answer is yes. And um, that is, in fact, quite often an advantage. Um, Suppose that we have an object where we want to, for example, a class where we only want to um, make sure we have a certain number of instances. Um, maybe 
um, I don't know, let's say it's some sort of constrained resource. We only want to have 10 database connections and we're writing a database connector class. Uh, we can then actually keep track of how many objects we've created uh, and register them uh, and keep track of them. So yeah, it is the same thing. Okay, next question is, uh, so uh, if we use only sound, then will we get a problem if there is a parameter or similar with the same name? That could be an issue, yes. Uh, just using bare sound here is, is, could well have that issue. Um, and circling back to the question about uh, instances um, and, and whether or not um, a, um, a class attribute is sort of a singleton. I guess you could think of it that way. That is, it is a singleton within the class. And then uh, Python itself doesn't have a singleton type object. But if you wanted to make a singleton type object, you would use a class uh, attribute to keep track of how many of them got created and only allow one to ever be created. It's like, oh, if we've got this created, we never create another one. So, so in two senses, it's kind of connected with, with the idea of singletons, yeah. Okay, so, well, let's try this. Uh, and you can see that uh, it does not work, okay? Sound is not defined, won't do it. So how can we get sound? Well, we could use self, except as I say, that's, that's not gonna be ideal and we're gonna see that has a pitfall later on. Um, one other option, which is really not desirable, is we can say this. Yeah, no, a super won't work because that just pops us up one layer. It never actually gets us to the class itself, I don't think. Besides, if we were to do super, that would be going to get object sound attribute and it doesn't have one. So, um, and you know, we, we could try that one. I mean, just, just to see. Um, so we do super and it's going to say there it has no attribute sound. So that won't do it for us. So the way that we can do it, which is ugly and not recommended, we'll see some other answers here in a later, is we could actually specify the class we want to get. Okay, that's not too great because if we're doing inheritance and we have a chain of things, then we need to be sure we're inheriting from the right level. And, you know, if we change the name of a class, we got to change it everywhere. So it's kind of a mess. So that leads to brittle code. So this works, but no, we're not, we're not done yet. Um, so in any case, let's see here. This is the same thing. I think we don't see anything different. But there's another question here, and that is how we could, you know, access and change a class variable from inside of an instance. So, you know, here we can use the class name uh, or we can use this either way. Uh, but then suppose we want to actually create, we'll create a method here to change the class attribute from inside the instance. So I, I'm going to just kind of fire this right now. And it, of course it works right now, but suppose we want to change um, change the sound. Okay, and let, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll fix this here. Okay, if we wanna change the sound, it doesn't give an error. Question is, did it do anything? And the answer is, it didn't do it. So yes, in, in answer to the question, is this where class instances come in, or class methods come in? Yep, and that's where I'm heading. So um, we will be there before a whole lot. 
So, um, let's see. So, sound in the Jedi change class is so that's the same. Uh, that is right. So, what we did here, and and let me show you this. Um, I want to add some stuff in. So, I think we'll do this. And um, so we can do that, and you can see we don't have anything there uh, because, in fact, this is creating a new local temporary variable that's only going to exist in this method. So as soon as we set it, we throw it away, basically. So it, it, it's nothing at all. Um, but then the suggestion was, could we, could we make it new duck? We can. So we can do this. And that would change it. Okay, and if we do that, we can go ahead and do that. And actually, we don't need to use that anymore. Uh, this one, let's get rid of this guy for right now. There we go. This time, that did work because we, we actually had that. Okay, but doing things like hard coding in the name of the class. Again, it makes your code more brittle and it's not really viewed as very Pythonic. So that's where we kind of get on to the next step in this. So just to kind of to gather where we've been and all of that. Um, so we know that instance data is attached to self, class data just lying around in the class. Um, uh, and um, then instance data. If you have self, you can access any of the instance data. If you have um, class data, you can see it through the instance, even using self because of the way Python's objects look up their attributes, but you can't really do anything with it unless you actually have a handle on the class. And yeah, when you're saying is this undes this is undesirable because it makes refactoring changes, everything like that a problem, that's the reason. The bigger your code base gets, the more likely this is to be a nightmare. Uh, if you've got 100 lines of code, sure, it's not a problem. You've got 1,000 lines of code, it can get tricky. You have 10,000, 100,000 lines of code, then you have a search and replace nightmare. So... Um, it, it, can, it can really turn into a hassle. So in the bad old days of Python, um, back when I started in Python 2 early days and things like that, um, we didn't have any other way of doing it than that. Uh, but um, in the past years, uh, a couple of different things have been added. And if you come from a language like, say, Java, uh, these terms will be familiar to you, even though exactly how Python does things won't maybe be 100% the same. So I wanna talk about two things now that are methods that can be in classes, but they are not attached to an instance. They don't deal with self. So one of them is a static method. And static methods, at least as, as, as I understand it, are pretty much uh, kind of inspired by Java, where Java has static methods. If you've done any, any Java coding, you're, you're familiar with seeing that. And what they sort of are is they're sort of things that can do utility functions, and they're part of the class, but they don't actually have that tight a connection to the class's data. And in fact, you don't need to actually create an instance in order to use a static method. 
Uh, that's true in Java, that's true in Python. Uh, that's kind of the, the common definition for a static method. You don't need to create an instance. So now I'm going to create an instance here and you can tell that static methods here, I'm gonna make amplify, which is gonna make the sound louder. Um, in, actually, let me do this. I want, if I wanna amplify, we want the sound to be um, uppercase. So, um, yes, yes, we're all talking about Python 3. Um, I don't remember exactly when class and, and static methods came in. I think they were in the later Python 2s. I'm pretty sure they were in the later Python 2s, but I don't remember where. Uh, it's like 2.5, probably, but... Uh, but yes, for now on, uh, Python 2 is officially a dead parrot. So uh, we don't need to worry about that anymore. Um, so, so yeah, I'm going to, um, I'm going to make um, a, uh, I'm going to make my amplify method uh, do things in all uppercase so that we'll have that. So, um, basically what I've added here uh, one way you can tell that static methods, and we'll see the same for class methods, are kind of a later addition is they didn't want to change the class syntax heavily. So we use this decorator thing to designate a static method and a class method. And uh, I will talk in more detail about what these decorator things are, um, I think next time, next week. But um, right now, good enough to just sort of treat it as magic. This makes it uh, into, this makes whatever follows into a static method. And we'll talk about how that, that actually kind of works another time. But um, so yeah, so basically what Amplify is going to do is going to take the sound that self has, and we saw that this wasn't ideal, but it sort of worked, uh, and try to return it. Uh, and um, when we did this before, that worked, even though it was uh, an instance method. Uh, so um, I'm going to try to run this right now. Actually, I think I will. While you're thinking about this, my question as always is, what I'm about to do, is this going to work? So you can think about that while, while I actually take a swig of water here. So, all right, um, I'm ready, I think, to give this a try. Uh, what I will do, I think, here is let me split this in two so we can do two different things. So first of all, I'm going to run this class. Okay, now somebody is saying, I don't see how this can work if it doesn't have access to self. Um, and. The answer is, that's absolutely correct. It doesn't have access to self. Okay? So, yeah, it, it just doesn't have it. It's, it's not, classes don't actually work like closures. So, uh, part of the key thing that you need to have the, what should I say, the closureness, isn't exactly part of the way classes work. So, no, your, your instinct is right. There's just no way that that can work. Okay. Uh, and in fact, I suppose we could do, we could specify this. Uh, and if we did that, that would work. And see, it does amplify it. That's nice. But that is like, no. Never do this, okay? Just never. Uh, as I used to joke with my, my students when I taught high school, uh, somebody might ask you where you learned that, and I just can't take the chance that you would actually say I taught you to do that. So don't, don't ever do that. Uh, this is kind of a bad, bad, bad thing. So what we would really do, since static methods 
are meant to be something that is just a utility function that doesn't have access to any of the data, we could do something like this. So if we pass it a sound, it will amplify it, and that's all it's going to do. Okay, and, and actually, I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, let me, let's get this working the right way, uh, and um, then um, I, will, I will be happy to answer that question, because that is, in fact, the perfect question. So we'll do something here. Hello loud. And we'll say that we want it to be, um, well, do I want to do that? Actually, I don't want to do that. I've, I've, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Never mind. We'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, so the question is, it's just like uh, a, a, so is there, uh, it's just like a function not related to the instance then. Uh, static methods kind of are that. So that actually isn't a terrible way of thinking about it. Um, and to illustrate a little bit better, I can kind of, you know, think about, we can think about uh, how they would sort of work. A lot of times static methods are used to um, basically create a bunch of utilities that you just want to have handy. Uh, in Java, everything has to be part of a class. So sometimes in Java, you'll actually see um, a whole class that is nothing but static methods. And in Python, that would be a very unPythonic thing to do. In Python, uh, what you would do in that situation is just make a module full of functions. So when I'm teaching people that come from Java or, 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 or some other languages, I always have to make this point. If you actually find yourself uh, creating a class that's only static methods, really you just want a bunch of functions. You don't want a class at all. So as the answer that went into chat says, and, and, and I'm, I'm in agreement with you there, this was added as a convenience so that you could have your utility functions be included as part of, uh, as part of a class. Uh, there was, as I recall, a fair amount of debate at the time uh, as to whether we really needed to do this or not, because you could always just have them in the same module or whatever. Um, but there are occasions where maybe you just want to import that class and you want to have the utility functions as well, then it's handy to have this. So that's why that was added. Uh, so again, class will, will not actually be looking directly at, typically it won't be looking directly at the class attributes or the instance attributes, it's just there as a thing. Um, because, um, you know, it can't look at instance attributes because we could do something like uh, this. Uh, and let's see, we need to print that, so let's print that. So we can do, oh, what did I do wrong now? It takes it, da, 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 but one was given. Be sure I've got that right. Oops. There we go. Um, always be sure to update your classes when you're doing a demo. So, um, so yeah. So we could do this, though, you see, and we wouldn't need to have any instance at all, and this would still work because it's just kind of disconnected. So that gets us to the other part, which are class methods. And class methods are like instance methods, except, uh, except that they get as a parameter uh, CLS instead of self. That is, they get the class. Uh, rather than self. 
And um, yeah, I'm glad, you know, it, that is true. They see, that's the thing in Python, you don't absolutely need uh, static methods. So a lot of people don't end up learning them or figuring them out. And then when you run across them, it's a little bit puzzling. So that's, that's why I wanted to throw those in. So yeah, so we can have now class methods, which are designed to be kind of like instance methods, except they work on uh, the class rather than on the instance. So um, let's have a little bit of a look at this. I have here a bunch of things uh, that, that we can kind of poke at here. But first thing I want to do is um, we're going to define a, a couple of class methods. So just like we used the decorator static method to make things a static method, uh, we're going to uh, now use a, 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 a decorator class method to turn things into class methods. Uh, and then the other thing we need to do is we need to be sure that we give it um, the class. And for that, we, we traditionally use CLS. Okay, now we don't have to use CLS any more than like last time we were playing around, we, we discovered we didn't really need to use the word self. Uh, but please, please, please use self because everybody uses self and that's what they understand. And please, please, please use CLS because everybody uses CLS and that's what they understand. Um, you're going to get nowhere if you try to do something really clever um, and, and nobody understands what it is. And, you know, kind of as a footnote, whenever I've tried to do something really, really clever and then ended up fooling the idiot that was reading the code later on, uh, usually that idiot was me and I forgot what I did and I ended up fooling myself. So uh, just uh, uh, do that. So uh, yeah, do, do, not, do not use any of the other things. Just don't, just don't. So um, I made a couple of class methods uh, and the reason I wanted to use these class methods was I wanted to have a way of getting uh, this class variable without having to do something ugly like do, uh, uh, do you know, the name of the class, like new duck dot sound, that's awful. Um, you know, in an instance method, I could do something like uh, self dot dunder class dot etc. but that's also awful. So this is one use for, for a class method um, is, is to just be able to manipulate these class variables. So I want to return sound. Now, if I try to do it this way and this way, uh, is that going to work or not? And I'll pause because somebody can probably uh, just whip out the answer really fast. Does that work? Not work? Okay, I'm going to start up in the hopes that by the time I, the delay catches up, somebody put something in. But even if not, we can always run it to find out. So uh, here, okay, we got a yes, I guess. A, a yes, maybe. Uh, so here, <coughs> excuse me again. Here we're going to, um, okay, yes. Good. We, we, have, we have two versions here of what happens. Let's see. So yeah, uh, it's not happy at all. Oh, the amplify is not defined. Uh, return amplify sound, get loud sound. Okay, so we got that problem. I'm going to, let's, let's take care of this one. We're just gonna put a pass in here. Okay, so now we're saying 
uh, sound, sound is not defined. There. So you need CLS, I think, is in fact the right answer. Okay. Uh, and then um, that gets that one fixed. So let's see if that works. Yep, that works. Okay. And why is CLS sound saying none? That should be quack. Oh, yeah, because this here is different. So let's do, we'll do CLS sound there. Oh, we can't do that. We'll do, I'm sorry, we'll do um, this, right? Because if we're looking up a method, the method will be attached to the class. So we should be able to use get sound, which should get the class, which should give us the sound. So there we go. So got that. All right. So that means now that this class method is working. Uh, this is working because um, it's just using this regular lookup we've seen in the past to use the get sound method, which is here, which gets the class, which knows the sound, which gets back, which gives us a quack. Okay. Now we've got this one, which was causing a problem and it's gonna still cause a problem. We do that um, and it's legal to do this. That is, it compiles. Where am I? Sorry, I got lost. There we go. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There we go. Uh, okay, this is legal now. But again, we want to do this for sure. But now let's see, what do we want to do? We want to have something we can do this. Let's do our same thing. And this is what I started to do before. So let's do this. By the way, as always, uh, class methods won't have access to any instances. They won't know anything about instances at all. And just to, to answer the question, okay, so we're going to print uh, and we're going to do, just grab this same hello thing, uh, except we're going to get loud sound. Okay, so if we do that um, and we've got, we're getting CLS sound and we're calling our amplify thing with the sound. Um, so now we've got again similar question is this likely to work not likely to work um and while, while people want to think a little bit about whether that's going to work uh i think again as we poked around the last time you're right Classes are used to make instances. That's true. But you do have to keep in mind, too, that classes are also Python objects. So um, it's kind of a, a distinction to keep in mind. because Sometimes they're used without regard to instances. So, OK, so maybe this will work. Let's see. OK, so I didn't actually call it. Let's see here. I want to do. I want to do this, roaring, wah, wah. Uh, amplify, it doesn't know about amplify. So go back, that's an easy fix, right? What do we need to do? We need to specify here. 
that that's there. Because we're no longer in an instance when we're here in this class method. Um, we're no longer in, the, in an instance anymore, so it won't use the same machinery that an instance would where an instance says, do I have it? Does my class have it? Does my class's parent have it? Does its parent have it? So instead, it's just kind of lost. So we need to actually specify this. If we do that, then we're okay, and we do, in fact, get an amplified clack. So that's great. Okay. Um, I got just one more thing on this that I want to do real fast, which is the question of suppose I wanted to hide my, my utility method amplify so that people couldn't get at it. Okay, there are a couple of different things that I can do. Um, one thing I can do to hide it is I can put a single underscore in front of it and call it here. But um, the thing is, if I do that, um, I'll still be able to access it. See, all I really did was put a single underscore in front of it. And that's kind of a convention that this is supposed to be private, but it doesn't enforce anything. And I guess they say Python is a language of consenting adults. And so, you know, if you know what you're doing, fine, do it. Um, so, in fact, this is just sort of the polite way of saying, please don't use my amplify function. It's really meant to be private. Okay, but, and actually I can show you this here. If we do this, you can see that we've got uh, amplify here in the list. Okay, but suppose I add two underscores. And not an underscore afterwards, just two underscores at the beginning. And two underscores here. Okay, now this becomes as private as you can get most methods in Python. See, when I run this, I've changed this to amplify. I guess actually I should change that to amplify too so that we don't, don't break anything. Um, so change that to two underscores, that to two underscores, that to two underscores. Okay, when I run this, uh, I'm, I'm going to spoil the surprise. It doesn't work uh, because it says double underscore amplify doesn't exist. But it's right here. Excuse me, it's right here. So that's a new duck object. I put a double, ampli a double underscore amplify thing here. Uh, I go to use it here, and it's not there. Okay, what Python does for this is actually it does some simple name mangling. So when it sees two underscores in front of a method name, and it doesn't have to be static, it could be a class method, it could be an instance method. When it sees that, it actually behind the scenes changes the object name so that if you just try to use exactly that same name, you won't get it. Uh, in order to use that, in order to directly access that function, you need to know how it's mangled. So um, we created this. Let's actually look here in, uh, in New Duck to see what, what it does when it mangles something. Okay. So here it is. So you can see this is not exactly rocket science. Anybody who knows it all is going to figure it out because the way that it mangles double underscore names is it does underscore class name and sticks that in front of the double underscore. Once you know the name, you're totally fine. You can go ahead and do that. So I could say, well, I need to spell it right. So I can say that, and that'll work. Okay, so that's, that's, as, that's as close to, to hiding and protecting data uh, as Python will get. It's, it's really not in the Python philosophy uh, to do that, uh, but sometimes it is handy, so you get this simple thing, but 
as I say, if you know what's going on, you can get around that. Okay. Um, I've got one last thing. I mean, I've been going at this for an hour, but uh, I'm going to keep going. I've got another few minutes for one last thing, properties. Um, and um, this is another thing where, again, I'm going to be comparing to Java because Python and Java have taken kind of different, different solutions. And, you know, I'm a Python person, so I like the Python way. Uh, there are people who like the Java way. Uh, but um, the way that, that this happens in, in Python is that, well, so sometimes it's nice to have more control over your instance variables. Like maybe you want to make sure that things get checked before they get set or uh, that they're a legal type or that whoever is setting it has the correct permissions or, or something else. So in Java, they use what they call getter and setter methods. So that in Java, it's kind of, in, in many cases, it's frowned on to use to access the variables in a class directly. You go through these functions, get x, set x. And um, you can do that in Python. So let, let, let's actually look at how we would do this in Python. And here, here I'm going to fall back to the old Python tradition of using Monty Python sketches as my inspiration. So uh, I'm going to make a dead parrot class. And you'll notice my dead parrot um, has a name. It's going to be Polly. Uh, and it's got an is dead attribute that is true. Uh, there, there is no way to make it not true. Uh, and it's got a volts method, so it will stay dead even if we put a million volts through it. Um, so fine, I'm going to make a getter to tell me how many volts it's got, and I'm going to make a setter. And basically here, this is what I mean. Sometimes it's nice to be able to have some control, so um, I'm going to say I only want positive voltages. I don't want the current flowing in the other direction. Maybe I've got a sensitive diode. Maybe I'm just arbitrary. Who knows? Um, but in this case, it will, it will complain if we try to do negative voltage, positive voltage. But we got this set and get. So then, you know, I can make poly and I can put a million volts through poly. And it will say, yep, you got a million volts. Or I can try to put a negative million volts through poly and it will raise my value error just like I, I made, it, made it do, okay? So that works. The thing is, we're Python people, not Java people, and let's just say we hate this whole getter and setter stuff. We just do. It, it's, it's, it's using a function when we know we're talking about a data attribute, uh, and it's just more code to read. There's more things to go wrong. It's not Pythonic. So what do we do? Uh, well, if we're Python, um, we, we create uh, uh, properties. Because if we set up all of this stuff with Poly, and then we decide that we wanted to access things the simple, easy way, we could do this and it would work, except when we look at it, we now have our slightly hidden uh, underscore volts, and we've now got a new attribute volts, and they're two different things, and we've, we've messed up our machinery, and why did we ever let that junior developer touch this code? You know, all sorts of problems. So instead, we can do something with this um, property function uh, in, in our class. And notice, this is actually inside our class body. We've got our getter, we've got our setter, we're still storing our actual data in underscore volts. But we say we want to have a property called volts we want to have a property and it's getter is the get volts function and it's setter is the set volts function. Okay, with properties then, um, 
we can still do the same thing here. This, this is the old code using the getter and setter directly. It'll work. But we can actually do um, something a lot simpler. Now we can just go back to our old notation. And we can just say we want volts to equal this. And then we want to print volts. Not volts, volts. So we can do this. Works fine. Now let's look at Polly's dictionary just so we understand what's going on. See, we were actually setting volts. We weren't messing around with some other thing. And if we go here and look at the dead parrot dictionary, uh, you can see we've got our getter and setter and we've got volts as a property. Notice it doesn't show up. The property doesn't show up as part of the instance. It's part of the class because we're using uh, the machinery of, of methods and everything to look stuff up. So we got that. That's, that's fine. But, there's always a but, but this, it's okay, but it's not really, well, I hate to keep using this word over and over again, but it's not really Pythonic looking. So we can do properties a different way. And that is, we can go ahead and there is a property decorator. And this is where things get a little bit funky, by the way. When people see this for the first time, they sort of have to stare at a while. But so this makes the uh, this makes the getter right here. So we've got we're calling it a property, and we're using the name of the attribute as the name of the method for our getter. It still does the same sort of gettery stuff but we're using the property name and, the, and then this at property decorator. Okay, well, that's cool. Now to do the setter, this is where it gets a little bit weird. And, and by the way, we could make a deleter the same way if we wanted to delete it, but uh, we don't. So, I mean, here, let's actually do this right. Uh, if um, volts is less than zero, um, we want to raise a value uh, error. There we go. And if not, we can go ahead and do our settings. So that works as before. But notice we used volts. We use volts again because that's the name of our property. And this is the part that's weird. Rather than using property.setter, um, rather than using property.setter, we use the name of the property that we created, basically so that if we have more than one property, it's easier for the Python interpreter uh, compiler to keep things straight. So we know that this is the setter for the volts property we just made. And then it does settery type stuff, okay? All right, now, I mean, I guess just so you know that, let's, let's only do a thousand volts here, just so you know that we got something different going on. Uh, so here, if we do this now, it does exactly the same thing we did up above, unless I made a syntax error some way. And yeah, so we can set it there. And if we look, we've got the same thing, that is we have volts as a property. It's just this way of doing it basically achieves the same thing as this, but it's much clearer. Uh, if you do it with property, basically the issue, the reason why this is unpythonic and people don't like it is that you need to, okay, so this is get volts. You need to go find get volts to see what it does mentally to fill out the picture in your mind and set volts. In this case, they're side by side, but suppose you had a big class and they were 30 lines apart. Then you would be kind of flipping back and forth, split screen, whatever you do to try and keep track of the two things at once. So once you understand this system, 
It's really easy. Ah, volts is going to be a property. Ah, this is going to be the center. And uh, you can keep it all together uh, much more nicely. Okay, so that's my stuff. Uh, like I say, I went a few minutes over, but um, that's what happens when I get started talking about Python. Are there any any questions, anything that, that people want to bring up now? Um, and by the way, I did, since I am getting better in my streaming and all of that, my, my, my Twitch now has a suggestion box. So if there's something you want to hear me talk about, you can always stick that in there. So question, what could be a practical reason for keeping the attribute private and not use it directly? Um, avoiding getters and setters. Um, I, it depends. I mean, I think it's kind of a matter of personal taste. Um, sometimes, um, well, people are more or less paranoid. So um, if you're really concerned about people getting access to that, I suppose the other thing for keeping things um, sort of private and only accessing them through getters and setters. Uh, it can be handy if you think that the implementation is going to change. Like maybe in your prototype, you're just going to have data sitting there or maybe you're going to just read data from a text file or do something really simple. And then later on, maybe it's going to be reading data from a database or something else. Uh, you want to make sure people don't mess around with that data element. Uh, because if they actually know the implementation, they'll be tempted to mess with the implementation. Then when you change the implementation, you're going to have a problem. So that's kind of a reason. Um, so single or double underscore for keeping things private? Well, like I say, it depends upon how private. So single underscore is you're asking nicely. And Anybody who looks at your code and knows you've got a single underscore attribute, you can go ahead and access it. Uh, double underscore is when you're trying to use that little name mangling to make it be a little bit more strict about it so that they can't do that. So in general, I think I've seen a lot more code that just uses a single underscore rather than a double underscore. So certainly that's, that's my prejudice and certainly on my team, uh, we pretty much leave it at single underscore and make it clear that, you know, everybody knows that's private. So, you, you know, you shouldn't really be messing with it outside of that particular object. Um, and I think in general for the Python code, I've seen that single underscore is, is by far the more common. But you might well see it with the double underscore, so it's good to know what's going on. Uh, because then if for some reason you need to access that attribute uh, and you, it's not there, what? At least you know what's going on uh, and you'd be able to make your decision. Um, so, I, yeah, I mean... I don't recall, I don't think PEP8 says anything about that. Um, so I'm not sure that there is a huge, huge consensus, but in just in general, that's my impression. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad that, that that helped make some things make sense for people. Any other questions? Okay, well, I've been, I've been going on and on and on long enough. I mean, uh, I know from some of you on the other side of the Atlantic, it's later on in your Friday night. For me, it's just middle of the day and Friday afternoon, but um, I'm, uh, I'm happy that you joined me. And again, I, I thank you all for putting questions into the chat. Um, certainly for me, that makes it more fun. And I think it means that we kind of cover things a little bit better. So, so thank you for that. Uh, and I, I'm planning to be around next Friday. Uh, I am going to switch this over to, to my ending screen. 
Um, but uh, again, um, thanks everybody. Uh, and um, yeah, we'll see you next week or whenever. And uh, everybody take care, stay safe. As I say to my team, stay bored, uh, but above all, stay safe. And, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.